Joining us is Piper Sandler's Christopher Raymond, who has an overweight rating and a $360 price target on Biogen. Thank you for being here. Uh, curious, kind of, are you surprised by the, the market reaction today? Um, for today's action, um, not, not really. Um, this approval, this full approval or traditional approval, I guess, as FDA is calling it now, and CMS decision was pretty widely expected. So I think this is more of a what I would argue is sort of a, a, a very near-term sell-the-news phenomenon. What do you think demand will look like now that it received the FDA approval? How is that factoring into your, your price target there? Yeah, so, I mean, there's some controversy on this. I think folks that, that look at the, the warning label, for example, the new label has a black box, which I think has surprised some folks. Um, and it's a somewhat onerous, um, uh, you know, administration protocol, if you will. Uh, folks that look at that, you know, would argue that that doesn't, you know, argue a, a, a strong commercial uptake. But we've done a, an extensive amount of survey work on this, and it's pretty interesting. Um, the majority of Alzheimer's specialists, about 80 percent, view this as a, a major advance in the treatment of Alzheimer's. Um, we asked docs upon, upon traditional or full approval, you know, what's your uptake um, going to look like? And it's pretty robust. Um, about 85 percent said that they would prescribe this drug within a year, assuming CMS reimburses and there's a full approval. So uh, mm. we're, we're thinking folks are going to be surprised on the upside. So, so do you think that, you know, the serious risks, um, you know, for our viewers is serious risks of brain swelling and bleeding. So you believe that, you know, patients themselves will see these risks um, being outweighed by the ultimate benefit of the treatment, which does slow um, the degradation resulted from Alzheimer's? 100 percent. I mean, the risk of, of not treating is pretty severe. Um, this is a debilitating disease. It's, it's catastrophic. Uh, anybody that has a, a family member that's gone through this knows that. Um, you know, I, I think the, um, you know, the, the calculus that any patient and any physician is going to make is that, you know, yes, this is not a, just taking a pill and forgetting about it. It's, there's, there's definitely some stuff involved. But at the end of the day, you're avoiding, you know, what's a, a, a near certain death sentence or a certain death sentence, really. Where does this leave us bigger picture with regard to Alzheimer's treatments, whether it's this lane of approach at, uh, at treatments or others? Uh, is this sort of a, uh, an opening to a, to a whole class of, of, of similar treatments? And, and where does it leave the other approaches? Yeah. Well, no, this is, uh, there are others in development. For example, Lilly has a drug, Denenumab, which um, had, um, you know, the trailblazer uh, study that was uh, published just recently, or, or at least top line. Um, so there are other approaches that are coming. I, I'd, I'd say this is, um, you know, the first foray into a, a real, truly disease-modifying you know, treatment. Um, our view is, you know, even with um, Denenumab, which is the Lilly drug being on the market, it looks like Lakembi is, is best in class for now, at mm -hmm. least for the for the modeling, you know, the, the future that we can model. And what about accessibility? Um, you know, in order to get treatment, it as you mentioned, it, it's no just kind of take a pill and forget about it. Um, you know, do you think that the supply and the supply of um, caregivers who are able to to give this treatment will match the demand that's out there, at least in the short run? Yeah. Yeah, so there's a couple things that are involved here, or barriers. You know, one is the monitoring requirements. You know, MRI um, at, at regular intervals uh, before treatment and then regular intervals after treatment um, is is a, a thing, and that that has definitely been uh, highlighted as a barrier among physicians. The other thing is is the access to infusion capacity. And interestingly enough, we we did some work on this and asked, and about 75, 70 or 75 percent of physicians say that they have enough access to infusion chairs, um, you know, this is something that's administered IV uh, every other week. So that's uh, that's also, you know, somewhat involved. But um, 70 or 75 percent of docs said they have access to, to that infusion capacity now um, to, to handle the demand upon full approval.